Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Industrial Channel. I am John with the Technical Support Team. Today I have one of our P653S pump assemblies sitting on the table with the purpose of walking you through how to program this unit. Before performing any maintenance or reprogramming the unit, I would suggest obtaining a copy of the owner's manual. This video will be a general overview of the programming. If there is a screen or code you see that we do not cover today, please consult this manual for more information. We are focusing on the front face cover of the pump, so let's move a little closer and we'll get started. Let's quickly go over the layout. Center top of the cover is the screen window. This is where all your codes and programming screens will pop up. The green button to the bottom left is the additional lubrication button. Press and hold this button for 4 to 5 seconds to trigger an additional lubrication cycle. The red button on the right is your fault acknowledgement button. If an error occurs, briefly press this button to acknowledge the code. The code will stop flashing and turn solid. Error codes can only be cleared by initiating another loop cycle, which must run through entirely without any issues. Additional to fault acknowledgement, this button also allows you to review the current parameters saved to the pump. Press and hold this button for 2 to 3 seconds, and the screen will flash a series of letters and numbers. This happens pretty quickly, so I would suggest pulling out your smartphone or a camera to record the screens, then play back slower to write everything down. Now to the programming. There are 7 total programming screens, however, depending on the features of your pump, you may not see them all. Our example pump unit uses a single internal pressure switch, which is factory set and not adjustable. However, if your pump uses pressure transducers, there are two additional programming screens available, which we will cover in a moment. To enter the programming mode, press and hold both the green and red buttons for about 4-5 to five seconds. The display will flash and display the first programmable setting, P1. This controls the hours pause time setting, which can be set from 0 to 59 hours. We can see here the unit is set to the factory setting of 1 hour. If you need to set the unit to run for less than 1 hour of pause, cycle through the values using the green button until you reach 0. Then cycle to the next programming screen by pressing the red button. P2 is the next screen which programs the minutes pause time. This can be set between 0 and 59 minutes when P1 is set to 1 hour or more. However, if hours on P1 is set to 0, the minimum pause time setting allowed is 4 minutes, but still can be programmed up to 59 minutes. The next setting will be P4. This setting is factory set to NO or normally open. It is for the alarm contacts when remote monitoring is necessary, such as having a dash or panel mounted light to signal a fault or sending the signal to a PLC. Should a fault show on the screen in this setting, the alarm contact will close and your light will illuminate on the remote location signaling a fault. The opposite will occur if setting to NC or normally closed. Lights will stay on but shut off should a fault occur. P5 is the fault signaling condition. Factory setting is O2 or option 2 as shown here. This means the different fault signals are separated between the two fault relays. An example, with P4 set to normally open and P5 set to O2, if you receive a low level code on the unit, it will close the F1 relay contact on the board and illuminate the corresponding light. Should a pressure error fault occur, the F2 relay contact will close and illuminate the corresponding light to signal a pressure fault. Now leaving P4 at normally open, but setting fault signaling to O1 or option 1, this is now setting the F1 relay contact up to receive both faults in the form of codes. If a low level trips, the relay will repeatedly open and close, or in my case, flash a light on the panel. If a pressure error occurs, the F1 relay will close and remain closed, or turn on the light. P6 is your setting for a startup lubrication cycle. Default setting is SP, which is start pause time. This means when the power is applied, the unit will power up and immediately begin counting down the pause time to the next lubrication cycle. When this is set to SO, or start operation, this will cause the unit to immediately run a lubrication cycle on startup, before returning to the pause mode and begin counting down to the next lubrication cycle. The next two settings are for units equipped with pressure transducers. P7 programs the internal pressure transducer's maximum build pressure, default setting is 3500 psi, the interval spans from 1400 to 4600 psi with 100 psi increments. The last setting is P8, which allows for programming the minimum vent pressure when using an external pressure transducer. This can be set between 200 and 1000 psi in increments of 100 psi. After the last setting of your pump, the final screen you will see is the P- screen, which is the completion screen to save your settings. Press and hold the green button until the screen flashes and returns to the main screen. To ensure the settings saved, review the parameters again by pressing and holding the red button while in pause to check the settings. As mentioned before, this runs through quickly so I would suggest recording with a camera or a smartphone to review at your own pace. 
I hope this helps with understanding the programming features of our P653S pump. For any further assistance, feel free to contact our technical support team at the information on the screen. If this walkthrough was helpful to you, please give us a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to our channel for more useful tutorial and informational videos. This is John with the technical support team. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next repair.